because every 10 <laughs> seconds it's like over here over here over here hey hey over here over here over here over and i'm just like my fantastic friend dan merle is here to talk about minions the rise of Gru. i've wanted to have him on here for so long and i'd hoped it would be for a good movie but it's not it's for this minion sequel Dan, what happens in Minions, The Rise of Gru? Oh. Well, you have Gru, who's in the title, so he's in the movie, and he wants to join this uh, league of superhero, uh, supervillains, and he's trying to like win over their respect, and so there's a thing about a, a a medallion that has to be found and stolen. But really, it's just a vehicle to have minions running around and doing silly things. It's it's like sixty forty minions to Gru. Um, so <laughs> nominally, it's about this like supervillain plot and Gru trying to become a supervillain, but it, it's really just about minions being goofy. If only it were that easy, though, because there's so much plot here. There was like three different plot threads going on because it's all weird. intersecting yes right none of which are interesting and all of which are chaotic and cacophonous yes. and just nuts um i enjoy minions quite frequently they are cute i like bob with his two different colored eyes and his teddy bear he can be very very cute my son is now 12 but he used to be six and when he was six he was super into the minions and the minions ride at universal so like i have sort of a soft spot for these little creatures as a memory of my child's growth, whatever. Um, the minions <laughs> stay the same size, but the kids get bigger. Um, but he watched this with me and he was super bored. And I think it's because this movie fundamentally misunderstands what makes this whole franchise interesting. Like 12 year old Gru is not interesting. The minions being crazy is entertaining, but like not for an hour and a half. And that's interesting that you say that because, you know, I, I don't have kids. And so the minions have never really worked for me because I don't have I don't have that that sort of tie to, you know, the childhood wonder of seeing a kid that is in my life, like enjoying it. It's just always been annoying to me. But I, but it's interesting because I, this is something I've been curious about because I saw it on, a, on the Thursday screening at two o'clock at my local theater. And it was probably about half full. I'd say a good number of those were kids. And it was it was oddly silent. Mm. And I didn't know if it was just my theater, but it's interesting to hear you say that mm -hmm. because I was actually wondering, I wonder if it's sort of lost a little bit of its luster with the target audience, not, you know, old grumps like me, <laughs> but kids, because that's who it's really for. Maybe it's a good sign, though, that the kids were quiet. Maybe that means they were super transfixed by it and they were into it. Like if they were running around and screaming, they would be bored, right? That's true. I mean, there was no running through the aisles either. So uh, perhaps it was just a, a transfixing cinematic event for them. I don't know. It's, if you're yeah. six. If you're if you're six. Yes, exactly. If you're not, it's it's going to be, I don't know. I'm sure that there's some also grown fans of the Minions, but it was a pretty tough road for me. I'm, right. I'm not going to lie. So Steve Carell does the voice of Gru. They've just made him sound young. And it's, of course, an all-star cast as usual. Taraji P. Henson is the head of this group, this vicious six super villain group, we should mention that the whole thing takes place in 1976, which basically is just an opportunity to put minions in like groovy wigs and bell bottoms and spend a shit ton of money on music. Oh my God. Every 30 seconds mm -hmm. with a, with a needle drop. Like it was insanity. Like that's the thing is like those, the, these movies make me feel like I'm going crazy because every 10 <laughs> seconds, it's like over here, over here, over here. Hey, Hey, over here, over here, over here. over, And I'm just like, it's like over it overloads my brain a little bit, but the needle drops in this movie were uh, that must have been half the budget. They knew it was right. going to make like a billion dollars, obviously. So they're like, whatever, unlimited music budget, go crazy. Right. It's everything from like the Rolling Stones to Linda Ronstadt to disco songs like more, more, more. But can I get nitpicky for a sec? Sure. Because this is the thing that bugs me when you're trying to evoke a very specific time period and the music is anachronistic. So, for mm -hmm. example, Funky Town is used quite prominently here, but it did not come out until 1979. And the movie takes place in 1976. And we shouldn't be thinking about that kind of thing in a stupid minion movie. No, we should be having but, fun. But we do. Yes, Pierre Coffin, I guess is how you say his last name because he's French, does all the minion voices again. And then you have this all-star supporting cast of like Alan Arkin and... 
of course, Steve Carell. Oh, Michelle and Yeoh. Michelle is Yeoh. In there. Oh, yeah. So many training montages. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's especially after the year she's had, which has been like this amazing year right. for Michelle Yeoh. And then, of course, she didn't plan to be in this movie in 20, in the same year That's she was in point. Everything Everywhere All at Once. It was supposed to come out two years ago, but. It is interesting to look at the, the 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 dichotomy of Michelle Yeoh's filmography in 2022. It's going to be very interesting. She contains multitudes. Yeah. So you have, you have yes. the plot of the MacGuffin thing of chasing after the medallion. You have the plot of the three main minions from the first Minions movie chasing after Gru. And they fly a plane to San Francisco because it's what they do. But, but like that stuff is actually the most entertaining. Like, I don't care about 12 year old Gru. I don't care about this whole League of Villains thing and trying to, you know, rehabilitate Alan Arkin's character. Um, you have what Jean-Claude Van Damme and, and- Dolph Lundgren else? is in Dolph there. Lundgren, yeah. It's, it's the, the, you know, Russell Brand does the voice. Like I was right. looking at the, the talent involved with this movie. It was insanity. Um, but yeah, I, I do feel like just go full minion. At this point, it's yes. like- just just go full minion. They, they, they know what their target audience is. I, I'm sure they don't care about entertaining me no. uh, because, you know, I'm not the one that's going to buy the toys and go to the theme parks and stuff. Go full. If you're going to do minions, go full minion. That's what don't, I say. Don't even speak English. No. Have the whole thing be in minionese. I agree. Completely minionese. No subtitles. It'll do just as well. Right. Note to you guys at Illumination. All right. So what is your number then on Minions The Rise of Gru? I'm going to be generous in my estimation here. I'm going to give it a four and I am grading it on a little bit of a curve because I acknowledge that I'm not the target audience, but I also really, really didn't like this movie. So I'm, I'm, I'm settling on a four. That's really kind of you. I'm saying two. I just found it incoherent and just an assault. And yes. even my own kid didn't like it. He sat there on the couch, just bored. So our number is a three. <laughs> and Minion is only in theaters. It's the whole point of why they waited two entire years for this movie to come out because it's 4th of July weekend and it is the only game in town. It's going to make a lot of money. 